and these three entities are equal to one in that you guys believe in one God. But to me, that doesn't make any sense. I have been waiting for this question for so long. Let's go. So in this case, my boy over here is a Muslim and he's asking, how can it make sense for God to be one person, but three at the same time? How does that make sense? Well, here's how it goes. So the God of the Bible and the God of the Quran claim to be all powerful, omnipresent and all knowing. Now, if God cannot exist as man and God at the same time, that man being Jesus, then he is not all powerful. At the same moment, if this God cannot exist in heaven and on earth at the same exact time, then he is not omnipresent. And if God cannot be mighty God and weak human at the same exact time, then he is not all knowing because he cannot know human suffering. So this means if Allah cannot be a man at the same time, then he is not all powerful, not omnipresent and not all knowing. But if Yahweh, the God of the Bible can be a man, then he is all powerful, omnipresent and all knowing. Lastly, it's actually more normal than we think for God to be Father, Son, and Holy Spirit at the same time. Here's how. Us humans are also composed of three things. Our mind, which is our consciousness, our physical body, and our spirit. It is not too different from our God, whose image we were created in. So in conclusion, for a God to exist, he has to be all-powerful, all-knowing, and omnipresent. God's promises all throughout the word that go beyond salvation are conditional. Nobody likes to talk about this. If you do this, then I'll do. We think we act like everybody getting the same thing. No, 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 baby. I know people because they want you to come to the church. They want you to get. I don't care. I want you to know the truth. God is just like you are as a parent. If you clean your room, then you can have dessert. Yeah, yeah. If you obey me, yeah. then you can have responsibility and take the car out. Yeah. And everybody be like, I can live any way, but God's love is unconditional. You're going to heaven. You just won't have no responsibilities here on earth. Revelation 4, 5. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder. Before the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. What are the seven spirits of God, you may ask? Isaiah chapter 11. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. This is speaking about Jesus. The spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of the knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. Seven spirits here. Number one, the spirit of the Lord. Number two, the spirit of wisdom. Number three, the spirit of understanding. Number four, the spirit of counsel. Number five, the spirit of power. Number six, the spirit of knowledge. And number seven, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. All right, y'all, so I'm going to be teaching on the triune Godhead, okay? The triune nature of God. What does triune mean, okay? Triune means three in one. If you're not comfortable with Trinity, whatever, you got to be comfortable with triune. Triune means three in one. If you do not think that God is three in one, you're scripturally incorrect, okay? So let's go to 1 John 5, 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, God the Father, the Word, which is Jesus, the only begotten Son, and the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. What does that mean? That means that there's one God in three persons or functions, okay? So that means that there's one God, but then there's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, it's one God. It's not three different gods. If you think it's three different gods, you are incorrect. You are in heresy. I'm going to explain to you even further. The Bible says Genesis in, in Genesis 126. God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, in our likeness. Keep in mind that the Godhead is triune, three in one. He said, in our image, in our likeness. I'm going to show you, okay? Now, man, we are one man, but we're made up of three parts, right? We're the body, right? The flesh, the soul, and the spirit, okay? So I'm one man, but I'm made up of three different parts, okay? Three different parts. The flesh, the soul, and the spirit. The same way that God is one God, and he is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So one God, three parts, 
me i'm in i'm made in the image of god in the likeness of god i'm one man but i'm made up of three different parts so one man the flesh the soul and the spirit one god the the father the son and the holy spirit okay so now you're seeing the likeness the connection okay i'm going to explain to you the soul right the the functions of the body okay so my flesh this is my physical appearance right my physical appearance my body right the soul is my mind will or intellect meaning that everything that i do comes from my soul okay because it's my will so i cannot do something with my body without first wanting to do it and my spirit powers my being okay my spirit powers my being now let's go to first colossians 1 15. now it says here about about jesus the son is the image of the invisible god the firstborn over all creation okay so so here's the thing you can the bible says invisible god he's talking about the father okay god right now jesus who is god in the flesh is the physical appearance of god is the visible appearance of the invisible god right now here's the thing can you see my soul or can you see my spirit? No, you cannot, right? But you can see my flesh. You can see my flesh. It's the same way the part of God that came in the flesh, the sun, is the physical appearance of the invisible God. So my flesh is the physical appearance of my soul and my spirit. Glory to God. So listen, I'm going to break that down even further just so you can understand it more. The sun is the image of the invisible God, the same way that I'm the image of my invisible soul and spirit. Now, we go back to Genesis 126, in our likeness, God said in our likeness, so the, the, the nature of the Godhead is in humans. We humans reflect the nature of God, okay? So we cannot see the Father, we cannot see the Holy Spirit physically, right? But we can, we, they saw Jesus physically because he's in the flesh right he, he came in the flesh he he came as the word of god in the flesh amen so let's keep going and I, I know i'm going really fast but i'm trying to you know get this through now john 5 19 it says verily verily i say unto you the son can do nothing of himself but what he see if the father do whatever the father does so does the son okay that means listen that means that i cannot move my body unless i want to move my body and how do I know that I want to move my body? By my mind, my soul, okay? Now the Father is the soul of the Godhead. He is the mind, the will, and intellect of the Godhead, okay? The Father is the sole authority of the Godhead. Whatever He does, the Son does. Whatever He, whatever will the Father has, so does the Son do, amen? So if I think in my mind to move my hand, come on, in the likeness of God, if I think in my mind to move my hand, if I think in my mind to move my hand, my leg, whatever, I cannot move my body unless I have the will to do it. The same way that the sun came down, the sun, right, Jesus, came down not doing his will, but doing the Father's will. So he could do nothing of himself, but what the Father told him to do and what the Father taught him to do and what the Father showed him to do. Amen. Now let's go to Hebrews 4.14, the functions of the Godhead, okay? Now let's keep going, right? Seeing then that we have a great high priest, that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Now, Jesus is the priest of the Godhead, okay? He's the priest, the head of the church. He is the great high priest. How many of you know that you cannot be a priest unless there's a God, right? Because priests serve God. That's their whole function. Let me go, let me show you this further, okay? John 20, 17. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. Why is Jesus, God, calling the Father God? calling the father his god why because his function is the great high priest he is the high priest of the church that is the that is the son's function of the godhead he is the high priest of the church seated at the right hand of god okay now that's why he said my god my god not that there's two different gods but he's the high priest so he needs to conform to his function okay now let's keep going um john 16 7 it, it said, and now let's talk about the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit's function. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Okay, so we know, we know that Jesus is not the Comforter. Because Jesus said that the Comforter couldn't come unless he goes away. Oh, shetaka ramakanda. Jesus is not the Comforter. The Holy Ghost is the Comforter, okay? That is the function of the Holy Spirit. He is the evidence that we are sons of God. If the Holy Spirit is in us, that is the evidence that we are sons of God. We are temples of the Holy Spirit. He comforts us, right? He came unto us the moment we believed in Christ. Now, here's what I'm trying to tell you. Jesus is the high priest. The Holy Spirit 
is the comforter, all right? He is the God of our temple. He is God inside of our temples, our spirits, okay? Now, Luke 22, uh, 69, it says, Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. That's talking about the Father. That's the Father's function, to be the power of the Godhead, the power of God, to sit at the right hand of the power of God. Now, why does it say power of God? Because the Father controls the Godhead. The Father is the ultimate will of the Godhead. The Holy Spirit did not come unless the Father sent him, and the Son could not do anything of his will unless unless the Father told him. All right? The, the Son could not do anything but the will of the Father. Okay? The, that's why Jesus said that he did not come to do his own will, but to do the will of the Father. Okay? Now, that's why it's called the power of God. That's why they call the Father the power of God, because he is the ultimate will of the Godhead. That is his function. So now let me break it down to you, okay? The Father, the Father is the power of the Godhead. He is the soul.